All right, everybody, Bryce here coming at you with a real quick crypto market update. Now, let's start with the macro, okay, with the high level view, because as you guys know, I mean, a lot of us are here because crypto is still such a small industry, right? It's about a trillion dollars. And that's like a pimple on the global financial system compared to the quadrillions of dollars that are out there. So again, that's where all the growth potential will come from, from early adopters like you and I. But what's happening in the global markets, uh, you, you cannot uh, look past it, okay, when you're looking at how to value cryptocurrencies. And, and particularly this week has been one for the history books, okay? And I'm not talking like, you know, looking back at the past five or 10 years. I'm looking, uh, Bank of America came out with a report since 1949, okay? This has been the worst bond market sell-off this week since 1949, I don't even know if anybody who's watching this video was around in 1949. This is what I'm calling unprecedented level of selling. You see the, the, the yields on bonds going through the roof, the strength of the dollar sucking liquidity out of every market. So remember, you know, you, when you price Bitcoin or when you price Ethereum, it's BTC slash USD, right? So Bitcoin worth 20,000 US dollars. And so when you have the denominator of the value that's gaining so much strength, right? Interest rates are rising. The DXY dollar uh, index is at all time highs practically. You have a, a softening in assets, okay? And so a strong dollar, soft assets or weak assets. And so we're seeing this at a really at, at a tremendous scale right now. We're seeing the S&P uh, back down at the June lows. A lot of people saying, hey, maybe it's gonna break the lows, maybe it won't. But I wanted to, to harp on something very key that I'm observing right now. And it's the fact that since uh, the 19th of September, so a few days ago, um, S&P is, or, or sorry, the, the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is down 4.4% last I checked, okay? 4.4%. Well, at the same time, Bitcoin is down 1%, okay? So this is actually a lot different than, than how these markets typically trade. Remember, Bitcoin and Ethereum, these are high beta assets, meaning uh, if the stock market's up, Bitcoin's typically going to be up more. Stock market's down, Bitcoin's going to be down more, right? It's high beta. And so what we're seeing is actually a little bit of a break in this uh, pattern, and I think it's very bullish for crypto because it shows that there's a lot of people that are finding value here at this $20,000, $18,000 mark, right? It's a very small little fluctuation here at the prior all-time highs, okay? So the all-time highs back in 2017 are now what we're trying to make the lows of this bear market cycle. And I think we could hold right here, particularly because while the rest of the world is falling off a cliff, Crypto does seem to have a little bit of a bid underneath it. And this could be for a million different reasons, but I do think that value buyers are stepping in and they're saying, hey, maybe this whole world crisis that's happening, maybe it's getting a little overblown. Uh, maybe the Fed won't hike interest rates to infinity forever, right? They're, you know, market conditions are temporary. Market environments are always cyclical. And so while we're in this wild, you know, interest rate hikes, flee to cash, emerging markets are, you know, doing everything they can just to stay afloat. You see Japan selling record amounts of U.S. treasuries this week in order to defend their currency. I mean, this is wild stuff, once in a generation type market movements. But again, amidst all this panic and chaos, Bitcoin, Ethereum, while they're down, they're not down as much as you would think for the, the level of volatility that these assets typically have. Uh, and they're not down as much, uh, you know, in the past couple of weeks relative to the S&P, the NASDAQ, all that stuff. So I think that's a very telling point. And I wanted to make that crystal, crystal clear here on uh, today's market update. Now, a couple of the other things that are going on in the crypto world, uh, some big software updates. Now, we've talked about this on the podcast and our private group. We talk about it everywhere. Uh, but if you haven't heard about it, the Ethereum merge, okay, that next step to fulfilling the vision of Ethereum 2.0. That happened, it went extremely successfully, and it's making Ethereum cheaper to transact on, it's making it quicker, uh, and it's moving it from proof of work to proof of stake. Um, so for everybody who, who, who's aware of this, you know, you're moving from an environment that requires tons and tons and tons of energy to an environment that is now reduced 
99.9% of that energy requirement for Ethereum. Uh, it actually, I think I saw a statistic, it was, uh, it the Ethereum transition from proof of work to proof of stake reduced worldwide, global, okay, electricity consumption by 0.2%, which is like, okay, well, hey, that's not that much. You might think about it on net, but for one network, that's, you know, a $200 billion network to have been consuming 0.2% of the global energy supply, um, that's a positive, especially in this energy crisis. Um, so, you know, Ethereum, this new transition makes it a little bit more ESG compliant. Now, love it or hate it, uh, it is what it is, right? And I think it opened, you know, Ethereum being this more ESG kind of uh, energy, social uh, governance, uh, you know, whatever this, this trend is with ESG companies, um, it makes it more environmentally friendly, makes it more energy efficient, and it also opens up Ethereum as an asset to make it more investable to institutions that have ESG government mandates, right? And so this is important. And again, right now, as, as the market is you know floundering left and right and up and down, and uh, nobody really knows what the, the near-term direction is going to be, I, I, I kid you not, these are long-term very bullish developments to make this a more investable asset uh, in an asset class uh, for people all around the world. So I'm very excited. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to mention was uh, for all of you Cardano lovers out there, I know Cardano is, is a very popular, very famous cryptocurrency. Uh, they just underwent their largest network upgrade as well called the Vazel um, upgrade. And so this again, accomplishes similar things. It makes it cheaper to transact on for applications and for users, makes it more efficient, um, and it makes it more scalable, right? Quicker transactions, higher throughput. It's like taking the internet from, you know, all these upgrades are like taking the internet from like the days when, you know, it took you 10 minutes to upload a video uh, to nowadays where you could download a video or upload a video in like two seconds. Uh, it's like that next level of increasing bandwidth, increasing connectivity, um, increasing nodes in the network so so content travels quicker and faster, right? And so it's like, it's very, very similar environment to, again, the early days of the internet. I think that's why we're all here, why we're all invested in crypto, because we see that trajectory. And so there's a lot of good stuff happening. Global markets are extremely volatile right now. So the best thing you can do is wear a tight stop loss. If you were day trading uh, or if you're, you know, you know looking at the markets from, from a swing trading perspective, getting in and getting out, on a monthly or a weekly basis. Um, I highly recommend you have those stop losses in mind so you don't lose your shirt, meaning if the price goes down to a certain level, um, you just get out, right? And you, you save your uh, dry powder for a better day. Um, so now is the time to, to use extreme, uh, extremely tight risk management. And uh, you know, I think also down markets kind of make us question like our conviction and, and our thesis, right? And so, you're, you're probably asking yourself like, hey, do I still believe the same things I do about crypto um, now that markets are down? Do I still love this coin? You guys see I'm wearing my maker shirt, you know, not financial advice, uh, full disclosure, I've got exposure. But, you know, you, you really do think about like, hey, are my coins going to be here for the long term? And it makes you rethink. So there's a big washout that's occurring right now. But when the tide goes out, you see who's left wearing clothes. And sure enough, there's still a lot of wonderful projects, a lot of wonderful companies that the tide goes out and they got their swim trunks on still. Now, that's not the case for a lot of these uh, coins that have now gone belly up uh, and, and kind of you, you get to see that, hey, this was all marketing. There was no fundamental value behind it and all that stuff. But for all the uh, the projects that, that, that fail, trust me, there, there's plenty more that rise up. And what do they say? Hard times uh, kind of create strong men, right? Or you could kind of say the same thing, like all these hard times throughout the crypto market are going to create strong projects. And so I think that right now, very fertile grounds for investing, a lot of upside, and markets are going to change like that. They always do. I mean, it, it felt like, you know, November 2021, everybody felt unstoppable. Everybody felt like markets were going to go on forever. Crypto to 100K, all that stuff, right? But that was the exact top. And so it would have been great to start selling at that point, but everybody was saying, bye, bye, bye. So now in the same way, here we are, fast forward about a year, and now we're at the, you know, we're at the bottom, we're at the lows, and everybody's panicking. It's like a chicken with their head cut off. People are saying, sell, sell, sell. People are showing me $100 price targets for Ethereum and all this nonsense. 
where it's the complete opposite emotion of what happened at the top, right? Now we're at the bottom where everybody is so convinced, so sure that we're gonna go lower, the stock market's gonna crash, the housing market's gonna crash, all that stuff. But once the consensus of everybody is like, hey, everything's now gonna go down, sell it all, that might be the time to be buying. So uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to checking back in here with you guys over the course of the next couple of weeks and seeing uh, how the markets develop. But until then, uh, we'll catch you around, stay safe.